let's turn this into this beautiful pulled pork bun me. All right, let's start off with some of the gear that I'm gonna be utilizing for today's cook. Everyone knows without those black gloves, you really aren't doing barbecue now, are you? Now, because we're doing pulled pork, completely optional, um, but if you don't have calloused up hands, feel free to use something like those bear claws in the top right corner. So I'm using the Bluetooth meter today because it's perfect opportunities where I need to step away from the smoker sometimes, and I can just keep, I can set an alarm and make sure that the smoker doesn't dip below or go above my min and max temperatures where I'd like to have them sitting. Right, now if we wanted to really build the flavor profile of the pork, we could use an injection, and I'll do, typically I'd put something like mango juice into a Boston butt. Then I've got an instant read thermometer there, the yellow one. Now I'll use that towards the end of the cook, um, and I'll be probing that throughout the pork, and when I, it has that resistance of that soft sort of room temperature butter, I know we're good to go. Now if you're knife freak like me, I've got a couple for my mise en place or my preparation, so I've got a little petty Japanese knife on the left hand side, and I've got the normal boning knife on the right. Both are perfect for trimming off some of that excess fat off the top of the uh, fat cap from the Boston butt. And obviously because I like to split atoms, we have the honey rod. All right, let's move on to the food gear. So being a, a bun me, we've got to have pate. So we've got pate and that front right. We've got our chili, cupy mayonnaise, the original Maggi seasoning, stunning. And I picked up some rolls from our Vietnamese bakery and you know they're authentic when they crunch and they go all over your lap, bloody beautiful. Fresh coriander is absolutely stunning on banh mi. If you don't like it, feel free to hoik it. Now we're gonna use the carrots. We've got some peppercorns in that jar there. We've got some uh, sugar and white vinegar. vinegar. We're gonna throw all that into a pot and we're gonna pickle those carrots because it is the acidity balances with the fattiness of the pork perfectly. Now I've shot with a Boston butt being the hero of the dish today. So we can utilize some of the leftovers to make all kinds of stuff. But today, this is gonna be beautifully soft, melt in the mouth, and that's gonna go wonderfully with the banh mi. Now, seasoning is completely subjective, but I'm using the Aussie Q Barbecue branded Oz Dirt. It's insanely good with stuff like pork. Now, for some crazy reason, you can't get your hands on that award-winning Oz Dirt, feel free to mix together a blend of kosher salt, cracked black pepper, some brown sugar, smoked paprika, and you'll get yourself a rub that will treat that pork beautifully. Sharpen up your knife first. All right, let's open her up. Now, like most things, preparation can be preference. If I'm gonna cook a big cut like this or a brisket, et cetera, especially if it has to be served up at lunch, I'll trim this and season it up the night before. I'll then whack it into the freezer. That's just one less thing I have to do in the morning. And we'll do the same thing with the smoke, and I'll show you that right after this prep. Now I'm just gonna point out a key, a key part of this pork, which is often overlooked at home, um, definitely not on the, on the comp circuit. So you can see these sirations of fat just here, and that's called the money muscle. The reason it's called the money muscle, because that can be the difference between winning the money and not winning the money in a comp circuit. Now for pulled pork at home, in particular for the barn meat, I would leave that on. A lot of the times when I'm smoking in the backyard, I'll actually separate this muscle and I'll cook it like a tenderloin, except for I'm just gonna push it a little bit further in tent. But today, we're just gonna cook the whole thing in one piece. With a close up look, you can see those sirations of fat that I was talking about, that right there, that's the money muscle. You can always tell because it's opposite side to the bone. So with prep, I like to be faster than a thousand startup gazelles, so let's crack on. So we start off with that large fat cap. Now you can do it a couple of ways. You can cut some cross hatches across the fat cap uh, and that will allow a lot of the seasoning to penetrate. But I want to trim this down so to about a centimetre because to be perfectly honest, that is not going to render out. That is there to protect the top of the butt. So with your freshly honed in knife, we're just going to essentially shave the top off until we get to about a centimetre thick. Now, you can obviously go in hard and fast, go in nice and deep, but I'll, that leads you to mistakes. So I just prefer, like a lot of good things, patience. Just shaving that top off until we get to a roughly about a centimetre. Now, if you watch a lot of my content previously, you know I like to use every part of the beast. Don't think that this shaving is going to the bin. I'll put that into a small tray you'll see in the smoker and that will render down. We use that as pork tallow. Insane when you want to cook bacon. You can spread that over burger buns, you name it. It's absolutely fantastic. As you can see here, we've hit about a centimetre and now we'll just do that across the entire length of that fat cap. Now you can see along the edge when you've trimmed down that fat cap suitably. Um, if you want to tell the middle, I basically just press down and if it feels about the same, it should be nice and soft and gelatinous. 
hit the money on the head. Now that we've done the fat cap, we're gonna flip her over and check out the other side. Now, because we like to keep it, keep it simple, stupid, we're basically looking for any hard fat, and you can simply see that, and you can feel it, any scraggly bits of fat that we don't need. We're just gonna trim that off. This one is actually looking quite good, and there's not a lot of trim that we have to actually do here, so. Now, one step just before we bang on that rub, not mandatory, but we're gonna use a binder. So I'm using sriracha. You can use mustard, olive oil, thin coat of Vegemite, whatever floats your boat. Uh, well, I've done a few back-to-back -back tests with or without binder, and there isn't a massive amount of difference. I think for me, it's more muscle memory. And if you're trying to build those flavor profiles on top of each other, you can use a heavy, a heavy slathering or something like the sriracha. Just a gentleman squirt. You can do that over all the sides, and then we'll crack straight into seasoning. This is about the only time I'll let you rub this meat. All right, we've slathered it with sriracha. We're gonna hit it with some of that Oz Dirt barbecue rub. Now, I like to just have my hand on the, the left-hand side as I go around, and that's basically just gonna guide the seasoning back into the meat, and that, again, is gonna have less wastage because I'm a tight ass and I like to keep it like that. So I'll start off going around the edges, guiding that rub in so we don't have any wastage. And just remember if you can eat all sides, season all sides. Now moving over to the top, nice and high, because the higher you are, the more even coverage you're gonna get. Remember, pack, don't rub, save that for the bloody bedroom. Flip her over, same treatment on the other side. Now look, this is where you can get pretty fancy and you can start building flavor profiles by, like I said before, you can utilize an injection, say something like mango juice, is, it works really well with pork, but today we're keeping it simple stupid. The other thing, if you've got two favorite rubs that you absolutely adore, why not try blending them together? Sometimes I'll mix, if I'm going with pork, I'll probably have 70 to 80% Oz Dirt, then a little bit of backyard barbecue. The espresso notes in this highlights the pork beautifully, but you just don't go overboard with it. I put that fat into a bread tin, and this is gonna render down while it's in the smoker. Now I'll bring it in for a close again and you can sort of see the seasoning coverage. Now look, we haven't gone absolutely overboard. You can still see the meat shining through that seasoning. Now because this is the night before, we're gonna pop this straight into the fridge and we'll get the smoker ready for the morning. Now that it stopped pissing down raining, let's get the cover off this. Right, if you like to do it simple like me, I don't like mess, so I'm gonna put this underneath the bottom butt. Now, this is, works per perfectly if you have a top and a second rack. If you've got a bullet smoker, same, same. Put, it, put a tray underneath, it'll catch all the drippings. You can utilize it for gravy, and it's a bonus. You don't have to clean the underneath gravy. Now, now that we've got the two big logs down, we're gonna smaller as we go higher, and we're gonna go in the hashtag fashion. So we'll put the pork on top and then that will drip straight into that tray at the end. Bob's your uncle. All right, so the smoke is now prepped. Let's move on to making the pickled carrots. First of all, peppercorns. All right, so we're just gonna julienne some carrots. Feel free to do it with a knife, that's what I prefer, but we're under time restraint. So we're just gonna use a simple mandolin. And it should look something like that just resembling an anemic shoestring chip. All right, so we've got about 10 to 15 peppercorns in the jar. We're gonna throw about three tablespoons of sugar. Then we're gonna go half hot water and half white vinegar. Belt that up a little bit. Now once all the sugar is dissolved, we're gonna add equal parts white vinegar. Now we'll just seal it up. That will go into the fridge overnight with the, um, the prepped pork. That'll be ready for tomorrow for dinner. Bang it in. 12 hours later. <laughs> All right, let's get this fire started so we can start warming ourselves up. Now, regardless of what kind of pit you're using, you wanna get your pit up to temp and get a nice clean smoke before we start cooking. All right, I'm freezing my nuts off, so I'm gonna stay by this fire probably a little bit longer than what I should. Now, 
until the fire fully takes, we'll leave this door open and then we'll close it up once we're ready to smoke. All right, so for a large smoker like this, it's probably gonna take about 30 minutes to an hour to fully preheat and get a nice clean smoke. So we'll see you then. Still sitting at about 100 Fahrenheit, 35 Celsius, so a bit to go. Now, if you're using an offset, you can put your logs on top of the firebox. That will preheat them and reduce the moisture slightly and that make them ignite quicker and have a cleaner burn. As you can see here, the fires um, burn down just nicely and we're starting to get some great coals down the bottom. Now it's time to shut up the lid and we can uh, start getting smoking. Yes, it's early in the morning. Yes, I do have mud boots on. All right, so the smoke has been running for about 40 minutes. The pit's come up to about 250 Fahrenheit, 120 Celsius. It's ready to go. We've pulled out our pre-seasoned pork butt from the night before. Got our excess fat trimmings. Let's get it into the smoker. So take the opportunity now to throw in your probe. About 205 internal is a good guide. So like I said earlier, you could use a meat probe just to set your mint and max levels. Or in this case, you can set roughly the internal temperature that you're looking for, say 206 Fahrenheit, 96 Celsius. Now, if you haven't put your drip tray in by this stage, do yourself a favor and put it in now. Now, this is where you have the thickest part of the cut facing towards the heat. So for an offset, a reverse low offset like mine, the hottest part is off, actually opposite of the fire. Now, if you're having a bullet smoker, etc., like that, you can probably have the fat cat facing down. Don't forget the tallow. Right, we're now sitting at about 250 Fahrenheit, 120 Celsius. We want to probably keep it between there and say max 300. That'll be perfect for the boss and butt. All right, this is where we kick back, relax, enjoy your brew, use your smoker to keep it warm. Just chill out for the day. Depending on what time of the day it is for you in the world, maybe a little shot of rum in your coffee. All right, so with the offset, we're aiming to throw another stick or log on about every 30 to 45 minutes. Regardless of the smoker you're on, you still wanna aim for that nice, clean, almost invisible smoke. So as you can see here, it's a very faint blue smoke, pretty much invisible. All right, so we've been at about an hour. This is probably the time you need to do your first check just to see how the bark, etc., is forming on the pork. So that beautiful Oz dirt seasoning, you're starting to get that nice ruby red. Still got a fair bit of work to go. As you can see, it's still nice and plump. After probably another couple of hours, the rub would have set, the bark would be getting a lot nice. Then we can start spritzing. We can start equalizing the temperature between the outside and the inside. Now my go-to spritz for pork is a 50-50 blend of red cordial, apple cider vinegar. It also gives it an, just a slight caramelization on the top of the pork. So that's why you don't want to start spritzing too early, otherwise the sugars can burn. And remember what he said. Remember what I said at the beginning about me being a tight ass, using every part of the beast. So some of the trimmings, and you can see, yes, that is hot as well. There's some of that render. We'll be able to jar that up later and use it. All right, folks, we've had about another hour pass. Let's go check it out and see how the bark's forming. As you can see, the rub's starting to dry out. That's what we're looking for. When it gets, when I can scratch all parts of the bark and no rub comes off, that means the bark is starting to set and we can start to spritz and equalize that temperature. Now, remember what I said about putting your tray underneath and stopping all the filth? Look at that. We can pour that out afterwards or we can keep it in there. Um, and then when we go to pull the pork at the end, straight into there, less dishes. Now that they're a couple of hours in, we can see that the part of the Boston butt that has been closest to the, to the heat source is starting to caramelize and the bark is forming quicker than the other. So we're just gonna quickly rotate around. Now that's completely universal regardless of the smoke you're on. Gloves like these, fire slap rubber gloves, much like welding gloves are perfect for a task like this. All right, we're approaching the four hour mark. Now let's check out this bark and see if we can start spritzing. Now, as you can see, we've gone from that deep ruby red and we're getting that nice bark caramelization. See, I can scratch it in pretty much all locations, seasoning's not coming off. Also, a quick update on the probe. Remember, like I said at the beginning, especially when you're starting out, this is also a great indicator of how the internal temperature's going. But when you become more advanced, you usually go off the feel and the look, etc. This is a great way to set an alarm for your minimum temperature and your maximum 
temperature for your pit. So obviously if it goes outside of these barriers, it will send you an alarm, wake you up from all the beers that you've had during the day. That's about all you need, and we'll do that every 30 to 45 minutes. All right, let's check out that rendered pork trimmings that we put in before. As you can see, beautifully rendered out. We'll put that into a sealable jar, and that will pop that straight into the fridge for later. Once it goes into the fridge, it will solidify, and it will resemble what you would normally see as butter or margarine. And I love spreading this on the back of burger buns before you toast them off. The flavor bomb is nuts. Possibly even a cheeky pit master snack. Let's go check it out. As you can see, the color has formed beautifully. Now, because I was getting a little bit too much heat from the hot side, I just put a little bit of alpha there and that acts as a deflector and pushes that over the top. The internal temp's about 175 Fahrenheit, 80 Celsius. Like I said, the main thing is the bark is formed, the color's beautiful. That's time to wrap. All right, let's take it over to the Christmas wrapping station. Holy snapping duchy, that's beautiful. All right, so like I said, we're gonna keep it simple, stupid. Nothing crazy with honey or pads of butter or anything like that. We're just gonna put the pork straight into the double row of alfoil, give it a quick spritz, wrap it up, straight back into the smoker. Now, what I will say is, my alfoil tip is if you can get a hold of it, the uh, food service foil from Costco, the Kirkland stuff, thick as hell. Definitely have used this um, on a camping trip and had to act as a sort of a gutter kind of thing. It's actually really strong, works beautiful to wrap up stuff like this. Now, if possible, I like to have one of the wet gloves on, one free, then I can pick up a can and have a quick swig when I need to and not worry about it getting filthy. Now, just before we wrap it up, we just need a bit of quick spritz for that same cordial and apple cider vinegar mix from earlier. Now, remember that pork fat that we rendered out earlier? This is it in the fridge, beautiful tallow. Now completely optional, but we can scoop out a bit, layer it over the pork. Whilst it won't penetrate it and give it any more moisture, it'll give it a better mouth feel and some great flavor. Now you could almost argue this looks like Vaseline, as dodgy as that sounds. And yes, you can still admire the beautiful color of your pork at this point, because there's always time to leave a nice generous coating of that rendered out pork fat all over the butt. Just don't forget to poke the probe through before you put it back into the smoker. All right, back into the smoker. And we're probably gonna allow about another two hours. The test will be when I can push this through and it feels like warm butter. Good night, mate. All right, legends, it's been about eight hours 40. Let's go push the probe and see if it's ready to start resting. Now, just in case it's not ready, I like to keep the foil on when I'm probing, because as soon as I pierce through that top foil, you better feel straight away the resistance. You could probably do with about another 20 minutes, to be perfectly honest. Let's give it a shot in another spot. So that's moving much more freely. Let's give another 20 minutes, then we'll start resting. All right, so we're now into the resting phase of the cook, and we're on the home stretch. Now, I can assume you ladies and gents have probably consumed at least 10 to 12 beers, couple of bottles of wine, whiskey like myself, by this stage, so don't lose focus. You've got to get that meal on the table for the fam or for the party. I just want to reiterate, the probe that we had inside the pork butt, that's just as a, as a guide only. We want to go off the feel, so we've got beautiful melt-in-the-mouth pork. So using the instrument thermometer, metal skewer, etc., you just want to poke through multiple locations, and when you can push through, and you've just got the, the probe with the skewer just underneath your hand, and you've got very little resistance, you know you're good to go. We can start resting. So if you don't have a Cambro or a large esky to rest the thing in, you can use something like this. I've just got a, a simple picnic esky and I'll put a rice pad in the bottom that's been heated up in the microwave for about three minutes and the pork will go straight on top of that. Let's go. All right, so like I said, rice pad in, down the bottom, 
port will go straight in over the top. Now, in an ideal world, we'd like to rest that for about two hours. Now, depending on how many cheeky beverages you've sunk or your timing, etc., on the smoker, you might have your Mr. or Mrs. over your shoulder berating you to get this thing on the table. So that will really determine uh, how long you're gonna rest it for. Now, the beauty about something like this camping esky is it can take probably two to three Boston butts and to save a little bit of space, we can compress that down. Let's have a quick chat. Now, whilst the pork butt is resting for a couple of hours, let's talk about the history of Ban Mi. Now, it all began about mid 19th century when Vietnam was under French rule. As you can imagine, the French brought their baguettes with them. Now, when the French rule ended in about 1954, the Vietnamese inserted their own flavor profiles. And one simple thing to this was, in regards to the banh mi, butter was replaced by mayonnaise. Now, as we all know, food is, is a massive part of Vietnamese culture, and the banh mi is no exception. Now, during the War of Vietnam, when Saigon fell in 1975, millions of Vietnamese refugees fled to all parts of the world, as such, Australia. Australia, in particular, say, Southeast Queensland, in particular Sunnybank, you would know sweet chilli sauce is very unique to this particular region in Australia. Now, not often seen in other areas of the world when it comes to banh mi. So we have been lucky enough to be graced by this absolute flavoured grenade called banh mi. Salty, sweet, savoury and sour. Absolute heaven. All right, Cobra, pull out your best samurai sword. Let's do that last bit of vegetable prep before the pork is rested and ready to rock and roll. Snag yourself a spring onion. One of the most divisive uh, ingredients is coriander. Now we're just gonna separate the leaves from the stem. It's just as simple as that, and then we'll put that to the side, ready to serve right at the very end. Just a quick hack, it goes with parsley as well. You can put the stem in a grater and just pull it through and it'll pull the leaves straight off. All right, reserve these at the end. Next on the agenda is chilies. We're just gonna slice them up just like you normally would, nothing fancy. Now, don't stuff yourself over. Go wash your hands before you move on to the next step, otherwise you touch your face, eyes gone. All right, next up, let's prepare the spring onion or scallion as now, last on our vegetable prep is cucumber. If you've got daikon, crack that in too. So you're gonna cut it up into rough slices that would simulate the size of the bun. In half, quarters, and then just keep going from there. Now I just like to depress the bun so you can get more filling in because who doesn't like more pulled pork? Bloody oath, bang it in. All right, it's suitably rested. Let's unwrap it. I prefer to do it in some sort of container because you can contain all the juices and we can all rip it apart. Now this, this reminds me of pasta bathroom. Now this is the tricky bit because it's so jiggly and it's absolutely, it's ready to pull itself. It's the hard part, getting it actually into the container in one piece. Pull it like you're told not to. That's a good sign, full straight off the bone. Look at that. This is a beautiful chunk. You got some crazy bark, followed by a tender spear of pulled pork. Now just close your eyes and listen to the sound. Now, I don't know if you can tell, but this is absolutely steaming up a storm. Look at the colour on that, exactly what we want. We want a combination of beautiful ruby red bark, beautiful soft tender pork. Just ensure you remove all the cartilage because we don't want to be fanging on that. Remember, a true bun me. Super crunchy, so it makes an absolute mess everywhere. Now, let's lay this bad boy. First thing you want is some of that beautiful pate. 
don't go shy because this is one of the most unique parts of the flavor profile. I like to go, so the pate on the right hand side. Then on the left, we're gonna go a generous dashing of Kewpie, quick squeeze together. Now we're gonna go some of the Maggi original seasoning, absolute flavor bomb. Now the reason I put it on at this stage is because, because there's not an, an awful lot of ingredients so far, it can soak into that bread and you're gonna get some of that big umami flavor hits. All right, now we're gonna go some of that beautiful low and slow pulled pork. Don't be shy, we're not here to truck spiders. Quick progress update, that's already feed porn level. Now let's finish it off with those bright and sharp vegetables. So nice couple of strips of cucumber. That will give it a nice snap and freshness. You've got your spring onions. Freshly sliced chili. Some of that pickled carrot we did last night. Now the acidity from these carrots is gonna cut through the fattiness of that pork absolutely perfectly. Now we've reached the epic journey. We've hit about 10 hours, we've got some beautiful smoke over that insane Boston bar. We've got the pickled carrots, we've got fresh chili, cucumber, spring onion, we've got pate, kewpie mayonnaise, and that crunchy Vietnamese baguette. How insane is this? Bang it in your head. I'm so glad you joined me on this journey. Gotta have a bloody taste test. <laughs> Truck a duck and root the boot, that is absolutely insane. The flavour combination going off is absolutely mental. I hope you took something away from today. Use pulled pork in a different manner. Whether it be your first time, your hundredth time, pulled pork bun me. Absolutely get it in. Make sure you give this a crack. Contact me on Aussie underscore QBBQ. Whether it be TikTok, Instagram, Facebook, you name it. I'm there. Catch me on my website. Cheers, you absolute legends.